Transit, good morning. How are we feeling? We feeling good? Okay, okay, good energy. Where are my sixth graders at? Are y'all doing well? All right. Hey, you've almost made it. You're like halfway through your first official transit. You're doing great. Seventh graders, where are we at? Okay, okay. Hey, you're no longer the youngest in transit, and that's amazing. That's super exciting. Eighth graders, where are we at? Top dogs. That's it, that's it. That's that last year's uh, middle school energy. Well, hey, we're super excited uh, that you guys are here. We're all moving up, promotion Sunday. My name is Jake, uh, if we've never met before. Super excited to get to be with you guys. We're kicking off a brand new year in transit, kicking off a brand new series called One Another. And so this morning, as we get started, I wanna ask you a question. Here's my question for you. Have you ever had a wardrobe malfunction? Anybody? You know when you're like, clothes don't do what they're supposed to do, you know? So one of the worst wardrobe malfunctions I've ever had, maybe the only one I've ever had, but it was really traumatic, was my freshman year of college. Me and some friends were going to the Braves game at Turner Field. It was the last Braves game at Turner Field before they moved to Truist Park. They are now, you're like downtown Atlanta, Turner Field. We're like, we gotta go, it's the last one ever. But we're in college, we were broke. So we're like, we gotta get like the nosebleeds, like, you know, closer to heaven than earth kind of seats. And so we, we're going to Turner Field, we're getting there. We have to go to, up to escalators, of course, cause you gotta go up. And so me and all two friends that I had at the time um, get on the escalator. And because I am as smooth as a greased up watermelon, I decided I'm going to lean up against the side of the escalator and talk to my two friends. And about halfway up the escalator, I heard this noise. It sounded a little bit like this. And about the same time I heard said noise, I felt this tug on my tush. And I was like, oh my gosh, what's happening? Before I knew it, I was being drugged down the escalator by the seat of my pants. And so in order to preserve my life, I ripped up my shorts out of the escalator and there's about a six inch gap that's formed right down the middle of, of my shorts. And so um, the good news, the good news of the trip was that my underwear were red, white, and blue that day. So go Braves, um, which was great. Um, it gets better though. So as we're going up to our seats, I'm just like, you know, I'm just gonna sit the whole time. No one has to know. We'll like be the, the last ones to leave. But of course, as any sports game goes, please rise for the national anthem. And so I'm like, you know, trying to like pull my shirt down lower and Oh, say, can you see my underwear by the dawn? You know? And so then I'm like, you know what? We can sit the rest of the game. I'm not getting snacks. I don't care how hungry I get. I'm not going to the bathroom. Like, I'm just, I'm just going to sit right here. And then, you know, please rise for the seventh inning stretch. And I'm like, if there's one thing I do not need to do in this moment, it is stretch. I do not need my, plant, my pants splitting any more than they already are. And so that was the story of me ripping my pants, um, which is super, super embarrassing for me. But it did teach me something. The wind blowing through my shorts that day taught me a very important lesson, and it's this, that moving up isn't always promising. Like moving up this escalator was not promising for me. But this morning, we're not talking about escalators and ripped pants. We're talking about moving up in transit. We're talking about moving up. Maybe for some of you to a brand new school as you're moving up in a middle school for the first time. Some of you are moving up to seventh grade or eighth grade and maybe moving up on a sports team. You know, as, as we're thinking about even the future, like beyond middle school, beyond high school, like one day we might move up into college or might move out of our parents' houses. And there's all these different seasons of life that you were just going to continue to go through where you're going to move into this new, fresh season of life and things are going to be changing. They're going to be different. And while you might be really excited for those things, typically what I've learned in my life is that when I move up and I move on for something else, life tends to get more difficult. And there's different challenges, there's new things. Like you might be really excited to go to middle school, but then you're gonna get there and realize, man, my classes are so much more difficult than they were when I was in elementary school. Or maybe, you know, when you move into middle school or move up a grade, like your friend group start to shift and you're like, this is not what seventh grade felt like, or this is not what sixth grade felt like, or this is not what fifth grade felt like. And, and now my friend groups are shifting and I'm not really sure like who, who my people are anymore. You know, maybe you're trying out for that sports team and, and man, it was really easy to make the team when you're in sixth grade and you're playing on a sixth grade team, but now you're moving up and you're playing on like the main middle school team and you're like, I, don't, I didn't get the starting position I thought I wanted. And so we have these expectations of what it looks like to move up, but those things aren't always met. It's not always all that it's cracked up to be. But this morning as, as, as we dive in, as we're, we're starting a brand new year in transit, I wanna talk about how you can make the most of transit how this new year in transit, it can be what you want and more. Because I think God has more planned for us in transit than we could ever even imagine. I don't want us just to move up this morning. I want us to, to think about what it looks like to grow, to not stay where we are, to get to the end of sixth grade, to get to the end of seventh grade, to get to the end of eighth grade and be like, man, I'm so much better than I was when I started this year. Like I, I am a better brother, I'm a better sister, I'm a better son, I'm a better daughter, I'm a better follower of Jesus. 
I'm more patient. I have more joy. I'm happier. Like I'm a better person and I've, I've learned how to deal with things better. I've, I've learned how to talk to people and process. I want us to get to the end of this year and be so far ahead of where we were at the beginning of the year. To look back on this day, to look back on June 2nd and say, man, I'm so much further along. And, and just to be looking forward to what the next year holds and the next year holds because I believe that's possible this morning. And the reason I know it's possible is because we are not the first people to ever experience moving up or moving out of something. In fact, uh, in, in the first century, as, as the early church was forming, Jesus had come to earth, he had left earth, he'd gone back to heaven, and the church was beginning to form. And there were all of these new followers of Jesus. They had never followed Jesus. No one had ever really followed Jesus before in this sense, but, but they're trying to figure out what that looks like. But in order to follow Jesus, they had to leave behind some old ways of doing things. And in the process of, of moving up into this new season of following Jesus, some people were critical of them. Some people didn't believe what they were saying was true. Some people didn't, didn't they kind of judged them and were really harsh. And so what happened was a lot of these first Christians were like scared to, to be, you know, outward about their faith. They were scared to talk about it. They were scared to gather together. And so they had kind of stopped. They were afraid of what people were saying about them. They were afraid someone would hurt them for what they were believing about this guy named Jesus. And so there's a book in the Bible called Hebrews. And we don't exactly know who wrote Hebrews, but, but the author is kind of speaking to a group of these discouraged Christians. And towards the end of the letter in Hebrews chapter 10, he says this. He says, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. Talking about God. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. So there's two things I want us to talk about this morning of how we can grow, how we can move forward this year in transit. And the first thing he says is let us hold unswervingly to the hope that we profess. To hold unswervingly means to hold on tightly, to hold on for dear life to the hope that we profess. And the hope that we're talking about is the hope that we just sang about. We sang that song, God is love, the hope of Jesus. The hope that God sent his son to the world to die for our sins and, and rose from the dead three days later so that we can spend eternity with him. So that we don't have to pay the punishment for our sin. Like that, that's the hope that we have. The hope that says that on the days that you don't feel like you are enough, he already was enough for you. The hope that says on the days that I don't have everything that I want, he says, I'm everything that you need. On the days when, when you feel lonely and you feel like you're the only one walking through what you're walking through, he's the hope that says, I'm with you. That we can hold on tightly to that hope that we can hold on for dear life. And even if you're in the middle of a season right now, you're like, Jake, it's summer. Like everything's going great. You know, we're lounging by the pool. We're going to Disney World. Like whatever your summer looks like, maybe you don't feel the need for that right now. But what he's saying is if we learn to hold on right now, if we learn to hold on with everything we have, then in the season when life gets way more difficult, in the season when you're like, man, I feel lonely or I feel discouraged, you're not searching for hope. You're not searching for something to hold on to. You already have it because you started right now to hold on to hope, to remind the people in your small group about hope, to remind yourself about the hope that we have. So that's the first thing, to hold on unswervingly to the hope that we profess. The second thing is he says, I want you to spur one another on. How many of you guys know what a spur is? Like on the back of a cowboy boot? If you've never seen one before, this is what it looks like. There's a spur on the back of a cowboy boot that, that the cowboys would put on the back. And when they would ride a horse, they would use their spur to provoke or to move the horse forward. But the interesting thing about a spur is if you look at that, you might think like, man, that could cause some, like that might be hurtful to a horse. You might be thinking like, that's going to leave some scars. That's going to leave a mark. But really good cowboys, really experienced cowboys know there's a way to use the spur in which all it does is, is it leads the horse forward. It makes them move a little bit faster, but it doesn't actually hurt them. And so that's what he's saying is let's spur one another on. Let's spur one another forward. Let's not stay where we are. Let's actually move forward. And he gives us two ways that we can do that. When he says spur one another on, the first thing is he says, don't give up meeting together. Like some people were really discouraged and they were not meeting together. He says, don't give up meeting together. Like I know that transit at 9 a.m. is really early. And I know that sometimes you might be playing video games late at night and you might not want to wake up at all the next morning or, or maybe it's difficult to get your parents out of bed to get here, to get to transit. But I'm, he's saying, do not give up meeting together. And what I'm saying to you is do not give up coming to transit. Like, like, like don't get to a point where, where small group is not as important as sleep because I promise it's way more important than sleep. Don't get to a point where you think small group is more important 
or, or get to a point where small group is way more important than any video game I could ever play on a Saturday night. Like there's nothing more important than us being together, holding on to the hope together and spurring one another on together. You, you can't spur anybody on if you're not here. They can't spur you on if you're not here. And so let's get in the habit of being here every single week so that we can be reminded of the hope and we can move forward together. And the second way he says that we spur one another on is that we encourage one another. In the same way that a cowboy spur can be hurtful or it can be helpful, your words can be hurtful or they can be helpful. And so what does it look like for you as a small group to encourage one another, to be uplifting with your words, to be encouraging with your words? When someone shares something in small group that you're like, that's weird and like, I, I, I'm not dealing with that, to walk them through it. Even if you don't know what to say, just to, to remind them that you're here with them. What it look like to encourage them, to, to speak life over them and remind them that, that you care about them, that you love them, that God cares about them. Like how do we use our words to encourage, to spur one another on? And again, you can't do that if you're not here. Someone can't do that for you if you're not here. And so let's hold on tight to the hope that we have and let's spur one another on together. Essentially what I'm saying is don't just move up, move forward. Don't just move up in transit. Don't just move up to another grade. Don't just move up to a new school. Move forward. This year you can move forward in your relationship with God. You can move forward in your relationship with your friends. You can move forward in your personal like emotional life and the things that you're thinking about and dealing with. You can move forward. You don't have to stay where you're at. This is going to take a little bit of your own effort to be here, to encourage people, and to remind yourself of the hope that you have. Because I want us all to get to the end of this year and be like, man, that year was so good because we were all together. We were encouraging one another. Our small group was amazing. The camps were amazing. And so we're going to get to talk about that this morning in our small group. But before you go and as you're thinking about it, I want you to go ahead and start thinking about this question. What do you want transit to be like this year? What do you want your camps to be like this year? What do you want your small group time or worship time or the game? Like, what, like literally, what do you want out of transit this year? Because as much as we can say stuff on a stage and, and we can do all the things and, and we can plan a bunch of stuff for you, ultimately, you are the one who determines what your transit experience is like. You're the one who determines how welcoming your small group is. You're the one who determines, like, how friendly you are to new people who come into your small group. What do you want it to be like this year? One of the coolest things about the verse we just read that I hadn't really noticed it before until I was preparing for this morning is before he talks about holding on to hope and before he talks about spurring one another, there's this phrase that says, let us, let us hold on to hope. Let us spur one another on. This is a group activity. And so we're about to spend some time as a small group talking about how we can do this together, that you don't have to do this alone. You don't have to do middle school alone. You don't have to follow Jesus alone. So how can we as transit spur one another on towards love and good deeds? How can we together hold on tightly to the hope that we have in Jesus? And what does that mean for transit? And how, how is that going to shape this next year for you here at transit? So that's what we're going to get a chance to talk about today. But before we go, I would love to pray for you. So why don't you shoulder up again, wrap your arms around the person next to you, and let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this morning. God, I'm so thankful for all these students and all these leaders that are here in the room this morning. I'm so thankful for a space like Transit um, where we can, we can belong, but we can also share life together, remind each other that we're not alone, remind each other that um, we have each other, but honestly, God, even more importantly, we have you. And that's the hope that we have is that you are here with us, that you love us, and that you have good things in store for us this year. So help us remind each other that this is a year that we want to move forward. We don't want to be the same people that we are today, that we will be at the end of the year. So God, would you, would you remind us and, and would you teach us how to do that? Um, would you bless the conversations we're about to have in small group? Um, God, we're so thankful for this morning, thankful for this place. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen.